First, this is Ajit Khan and in this tutorial we are going to learn how to make simple REST API in Rails. I'll be using my blog on which I have created a complete post regarding the same. So let's get started. So before making the API, uh, there are certain prerequisites that you should have. The first is Ruby, the second is Rails and the PostgreSQL. We will be using PostgreSQL as our database. So the command to create new rails app is rails new rails api rails api is the name of our app and minus d option is for database and we are, will be using postgresql and we won't be uh, installing all the gems uh, during the making of this app so uh, let's make the app Okay, so the, this app created the bare bones structure of our app. It has created all the necessary files. So let's go in the app. Okay. Now uh, we'll be uh, using a gem named Active Model Serializer. So let's add this in our gem file. Uh, we'll be using sublime so here is our wrap we have added the active model serializer gem now also we need to come in the j builder and turbo links as we won't be dealing with the front end part uh, since we will be receiving and sending the data in JSON format. So we don't need uh, these and we are not uh, formatting the JSON response for now. So let's keep it simple by simply sending the JSON data as it is. So let's comment these. Here is JBuilder. So let's comment it out. And here is the turbo link. Save it. Now we need to do. Uh, we need to install all the gems. So let's bundle install. So it's installing uh, all the gems. Let's go ahead. Meanwhile. Now uh, we'll be making an API. So to make an API, we'll be isolating the API controllers. So we'll be having a different directory, uh, which is named as API. And inside that we will be having our controllers. So next is we need to make an API uh, inside the controllers. So let's create the API directory okay we are done here so let's check so it is there now uh, since we have created by default the uh, rails check the controllers file inside controllers but we have created a separate a directory named api so we need to specify in the route file that we are going we are going we are going to have an API directory. So inside our route file, we need to add a namespace API. So let's add this. Okay, so uh, there are many useful documentation uh, here inside this file so we can clear all this out as we don't need it for now and let's put our simple code the next thing is uh, we have defined the routes that we will be uh, using api directory so it needs to search for the controller files inside the api and we need to also specify that we will be uh, using the default format as JSON. So we need to add this also. So finally, uh, our structure would look like this. Okay. 
okay so for now our endpoint url should be like localhost colon 3000 and the api now we will version the api now versioning is very helpful as it gives a better structure and code readability so in future we might uh, we might need to change our endpoint or we, we might need to add some new features so we can have a uh, we can have versioning so that um, you know, we can introduce our new feature in the new version so for versioning let's create a directory inside api and name it as version 1 now since we have created another directory inside api so we need to tell our routes file again so let's add it so we have added namespace v1 so let's replace the code again now since we have added another namespace so our endpoint should be like for localhost colon 3000 api slash v1 slash since uh, we will be using a uh, gem name device for the user model so just for an example we are going to use device uh, for those who don't know what device device is a gem uh, used for user authentication so it gives you uh, the ready-made things for your models and uh, the necessary things needed for an authentication so we'll be using you can explore more about it so let's add this gem now since we have added we need to uh, run bundle install so we'll install the device ram and uh, we need to generate let's run this command okay now we need to generate the model so let's use let a rails generate device user okay now since we have generated so it has uh, created the necessary migrations file so now we need to create our database and migrate the necessary changes so since the database already existed so it has not created it again uh, now we need to do migrations okay since I have already made this example so uh, this table and uh, all the structure already present in the database so it's not creating it again so okay we can skip this step but uh, you will see certain uh, useful output like all the migrations should run now let's build first endpoint so we'll generate controller for the users okay so it has created the users controller but as you can see it has created the controllers inside the controller but we want it inside the inside our api so let's move this So here we have this file. Now in the users controller file RB uh, will be 
adding a method named show which will find the users with the corresponding id and it will respond the uh, data so here we have defined respond to in json format and here you can see we are using the namespace api and b1 and the user controller is inheriting application controller the important thing here to note is since our uh, namespace api uh, is api so we need the first letter of this has to be capitalized and same for the version 1 so let's put this code So for now, we will be having the endpoint like this, localhost api slash v1 slash users and the id of the user. So if you uh, are running it for the first time, you might see that uh, there doesn't exist any user. So let's try this out. Uh, first we need to run the uh, rails app. So let's run the server. Okay, there are some error. Okay, the oh, uh, one app is already running, so let's stop this and let's run it again. Okay, good to go. API okay, slash v1 slash user slash so i have created uh, i have already created three users so you might not see uh, those three users so let's search for user 44 so as you can see uh, okay it's saying migrations are pending uh, this is because i have already created that database and uh, our migration fails so what we can do is let's stop this app and uh, let me run the migrations again and we will get back to it ok ok so if we look for it again as you can see cannot find user with id 44 so since the user doesn't exist you might encounter this error so what you can do is you can open the rails console and you can create a user from the rails console just to check if our endpoint is working or not so after creating this and after starting the server you will get the desired result say for example i have already created the user with id 1 so let's check it out hooray it has given us the json data the id 1 the email and created it and updated it in json format So uh, you can also check it via command line. So you can use the curl command, curl and, uh, and the endpoint. So you will get the data like this. So this is how to make a basic REST API. And uh, we have here used only one method that is show. So um, I'll try to make more screencasts for using more methods like delete, destroy, create, update. Hope you like it. 